Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a movie review this week, which is actually a short subject, but it does count as a movie. Uh, this came out on December 21st, 1979, but it only played at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood, California. They also played this at the Pepper Tree Cinema in Northridge, California, which I, it's no longer around, but I guess because it's the only places that can carry it, which is actually played as a double bill with a holiday re-release of the Muppet movie yes the Muppet movie that came out in 1979 but it came out in the summer but it wants to be releasing it in order for this movie to be played you know, so they can bring the entire audience anyway it's the film Banjo the Woodpile Cats it's a story about a young kitten who suddenly gets into bigger trouble he lives in a woodpile home with his family but he wants up running away from home on a pickup truck and it takes him all the way to the big city which is Salt Lake City so he can spend his entire time and his entire life you know having fun he can do whatever he wants <clears throat> and he wants up bumping in with uh, with this guy right here Crazy Legs you know, who's an entertainer so hopefully things will go for the better for them if something goes wrong. Um, this is actually an early production by Don Bluth, who's a former Disney animator. He teams up with Gary Goldman and John Pomeroy. And he actually worked on this film in his garage with a team of animators you know, working together. So they wound up uh, putting it all into one place. It was originally going to be a feature length uh, film, but it was cut down into a short subject, so that's exactly how they went for it. And it would have been interesting if this became a feature length film. I would have loved to see some characters joining in, which apparently that's what they were going to do. They were going to add characters like Rocco and all these other um, villains to join in just so it could become quite similar to all the later Don Blue films like of course All Dogs Go to Heaven and An American Tale so that's why I actually went into place um, and as you can see uh, <laughs> on the back I know on the description it says now on DVD for the first time but believe it or not this was actually a re-release from Fox because back in 2009 as a celebration of its 30th anniversary this had a two disc special edition the first disc was the audio commentary and the feature film itself while the second disc is just all the features which has um, a conversation with Don Bluth you know, the story behind Banjo and they even added uh, a vintage uh, news clip uh, featuring uh, Don Bluth's uh, new animated studio. So that way he gets to work on all these feature length films while leaving Disney. So apparently that's not on, on this DVD, but all this is. But these features, of course, as I mentioned, are ported all the way from its original DVD. And it's put together onto this Fox DVD. So now you get to watch it and get to listen to the commentary on one disc. But it has some nice features here where they just uh, talk about how they work together and how they how they came about when they were at Disney and they explain uh, the story behind it, how it took some time and effort to do so. There probably would have been some more of that, but they did the best they can. So you can pretty much tell that this, all these interviews date back to the early 2000s. You know, the controversy, the conversation for um, the Don Bluth's uh, interview dates back to 2000 because he did mention the Sixth Sense in the interview. and, and um, well, the, the interviews with three of these guys were done in 2007. So there you go. Yeah. 
that's right here <laughs> yeah, with the artwork. And I got this for a dollar at Dollar Tree, so it was worth it because it's a very rare uh, Don Blue film. Well, anyway, it stars Scatman Crowders, no longer with us, as Crazy Legs. Bea Richards, who's no longer with us either, as Zazu. And Sparky Marcus as Banjo, the Whippow Cat. Also with the additional voices of Jerry Harper, Ken Sampson, Anne E. Beasley, Robin Murr, and Georgette Wipone. It's written by Don Bluth along with Tony. And not only did Don Bluth produce this, but he also teams up with Gary Goldman and John Ponerboy. Also did the animation for this. And it's directed by Don Bluth. The movie begins when we meet a young red-haired kitten named Banjo the Woodpile Cat, who's voiced by Sparky Marcus, who lives in a woodpile at a local farm with his family in Payson, Utah during the 40s. He basically spends his mischievous ways such as chasing chickens all the way around until his sisters Emily and Jean spotted him. And his father eventually stops him and makes a promise not to have him do that again. But apparently he doesn't listen because he continues to go on on this mischievous journey such as jumping up on top of the roof of a chicken coop so that way he can prepare himself to land on his feet. But Emily and Jean tries to stop him and it really ends it there. <laughs> so he got punished for that and then Banjo decided to run away from home and hitch a ride on a pickup feed truck all the way to Salt Lake City. And once he arrived, he suddenly founds plenty of excitement that falls into a series of danger. When it began to rain, you know, just when he was he was gonna prepare to go to a local restaurant and so he can have some wonderful food. Um, but apparently he couldn't. He, uh, he wants up in an alley and into a can so he can shelter himself to fall asleep basically thinking about his family and how he misses them later on he meets a cat named Crazy Legs who's voiced by Scatman Crowders who discovers Banjo in a can they suddenly strike up a friendship together where he tells them that he can go back the same way that he got here but during the search, Crazy Legs and Banjo suddenly come to a nightclub and they enlist the help of three singing cats, Cleo, Melinda, and Zazu. As well as all the other cats, you know, trying to look for the truck. So, later that night while searching for the truck, Banjo and Crazy Legs suddenly runs into a group of dogs chasing them around. And Suddenly the pair escape, drives the dogs away, climbing up through a series of boxes. But then they finally arrive into the singing's cat's home, just so they can get some rest until the next morning when Banjo wakes up and hears the driver of the truck out of the street. And Banjo suddenly says goodbye to Crazy Legs and the Free Singing Cats. Yeah, Cleo and Melinda and Zazu. And they eventually reunited together as a family back in Payson, Utah. So everything was going so well. So now he learns his lesson. It's a very sweet uh, short subject and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was cute, it was fun, it was adventurous. And Banjo and the Woodpile Cat um, is a very cute kitten. 
you know, goes into bigger trouble no matter what he does, but deep down of it, uh, he has a heart. He definitely made a mistake by running away, but he develops a friendship with um, Crazy Legs, uh, an entertaining cat, you know, who wears a nightclub. And he's very sweet, very kind to him. He really helps uh, Banjo uh, cheer up and try to find his family all the way back again. And so I guess things were not going so well for the city that he was that he was hanging around. But I guess he just wanted to have the fun he wants. And Scatman Crowder did a great job uh, doing the voice of him. Like I, I would imagine Dom DeLuise doing this, but yeah, he, they even mentioned it too in the commentary or. Even in the, the doc, even in the uh, documentary, but yeah, he did a fine job because this was at the time when Scatman Crowders was doing The Shining, that was uh, done, directed by Stanley Kubrick based on Stephen King novel. So yeah, um, some great songs joining in. I mean, especially with the free trio. Yeah, the music, of course, was done by Robert F. Brunner, which Don Bluth, along with Gary Goldman, um, also wrote the lyrics, which actually had a woman singing the song of the title, you know, Banjo and the Woodpile Cat. It really tells the story while you see Banjo just going through all his mischievous ways and everything, all the way until he went to the streets in the city, in the alley, um, very wonderful, very soothing, that's just sung by a woman, uh, I forget who's the singer, because it doesn't say, but she did a great job. There's some suspense, but there's some magical scenes here and there, everything, so it was fun. I find it amazing that this movie did aired on network television on ABC back in 82 and it was on home video by Family Home Entertainment before it finally got a DVD release so, yeah, 30th anniversary edition before Fox finally had a chance to re-release it themselves so now people want to have a hard time looking for it Don Blue has been known for animating some Disney classics such as Sleeping Beauty, also worked on Winnie the Pooh, The Rescuers, even the, the Aristocats, so on and so forth. Because he really admired it, uh, he loved uh, all the other earlier classics such as Snow White and the Seven Doors, Pinocchio, Bambi. I think he loves. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, so I'm not so sure. Yeah, he, he loves some of the classics. So that's how he became an animator. And you know, before he went on to go on his own, you know, with his team, Gary Goldman, John Pomeroy, John Pomeroy, and the rest of the, the crew of all animators joining in, so working together. And that's when they started doing feature length films and video games as well, like Space Ace and uh, Dragon's Lair, which would later become a TV series inspired by it. But he also went on to do films like The Secret of Nim, as well as An American Tale, which he teamed up with Steven Spielberg to produce, and, and he also directed it along with The Land Before Time once again with Spielberg but joins in with um, George Lucas to produce All Dogs Go to Heaven with the late great Burt Reynolds along with Dom DeLuise which became the the biggest of all the Dom Blue films so on and so forth yeah. and then as it spans into the 90's that's where we got Rocket Doodle along with Hans Christian Andersen's uh, Fumbelina, yeah, with uh, Jody Benson from The Little Mermaid, 
and does the voice of Ariel. Yeah, she does the voice of Fumbelina. Also, she, he, also he brings in uh, Barry Manilow to uh, do some of the songs too for those features. And then there's Troll in Central Park and Pebble and the Penguin. Not a big fan of those. All leads to Fox, where he went on to work on two movies, Anastasia, great film, you know, with Meg Ryan, John Cusack, Kelsey Grammer, Christopher Lloyd, Hank Azaria, Better Than Peters, um, Angela Lansbury, Kirsten Dunst, you name it. And of course, Titan A.E., <laughs> which had Matt Damon, Drew Barrymore, John Leguizamo, Bill Pullman, and all the rest. Yeah. And then he stopped doing movies after that. Yeah. But he's still remembered by. He's a legendary uh, animator and great director and writer, along with Gary Goldman and John Ponderoy. So they were a great team. But the animation was very stunning for its time. I mean, you could tell coming from uh, from Don Bluth and along with Gary Goldman and John Pornoy that they had to work together with a team of other animators joining in. You know, where they had to cut into pieces from the machines that they had to borrow. Um, they had to force their way out. I mean, this was going to be used for the Christmas uh, holiday season. The fact that some of these shots uh, they had from Salt Lake City was actually taken from a, a location scout, so they had to use all these effects to put in there to make it look exactly like it, just to be cheaper. Yeah, there's some scenes in the movie where, where he was at a local bar, you know, while the guys were just uh, playing you know, poker and all this other stuff. And, all these other games that he had to go for, and then there was even a scene where he actually drank some beer. <laughs> yes, he actually drank some beer. Uh, even before he went to the city, uh, he also uh, went on to, you know, take a bath. Uh, he like fool around. The other stuff uh, with his sisters. Yeah, all of that's in there. And it actually did turn into a video game, amazingly enough, um, that was actually going to be released uh, for their iPhone and iPod Touch in 2009 by Iconic Apps. So that's really cool. If you haven't got this, if you're a big uh, Don Blue fan, definitely check this out and pick this up at your local store, like maybe Dollar Tree or Big Lots or any other places that still carries this. So anyway, I, I give Banjo the Whip Pile Cat five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.